Today, I wanna to talk about your art style. Is it good? Does it suck? Let's try to figure this out a little bit. And I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent, but I promise you I'll come back full circle with this, all right? I've always found living in a society to be a really weird and kind of annoying thing. I've never really understood people and I haven't really cared to too much to tell you the truth. The priorities that most people have, I've never really found any merit in. The music that they listen to, the movies that they like, the shows they watch, the art that they like, I've never really found too much of a taste for any of it. In fact, I was sitting in a class once and the professor asked, what's the difference between a hit song and a song that you've never heard of? The answer that he gave us was about $2 million. That $2 million goes to airplay. Basically, here's a song, let's get it on the air in front of the general public, people will like it, they'll go to shows, they'll buy the merchandise, they'll buy you know, the singles on iTunes, whatever. And that's how a hit song is made. Now, that example that he gave us raised a few questions, and the questions that it brought up in my mind was, how does pop culture become pop culture? Is it really the popular consensus that this particular music being played is among the best in the entire world? Or has it been advertised and played so much that we eventually come to like it? All right? Now think about it like this for a minute. Have you ever heard a song and hated it? Absolutely hated it. But then you hear the song a few more times. And it grows on you a little bit. You think, okay, it's kind of got a catchy beat. And then you hear it a few more times, and you say, okay, yeah, no, I like the song. Well, that's the advertising, and that's the $2 million that I'm talking about. See, record companies sell music, obviously, and it's kind of a no-brainer. People buy music, again, no-brainer. And it's a lot easier to sell a few products millions of times than it is to sell millions of products only a few times. That's pop culture. Now... With that in mind, I always try to view art objectively. What is good art? What is bad art? And is there actually a difference? I offer that the main difference between good art and bad art comes from differing degrees of artist's experience and skills, sure, but it also comes from the viewer's taste, right? And it also comes from hype. Now, if you've seen a lot of my work, you it's probably not too much of a surprise that I really like uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat's paintings, and I absolutely adore neo-expressionism. But, but honestly, I've seen high school work and college-level work that is on par, if not better, than Basquiat's. Okay, now don't give me hate in the comments for this one. This is really just my opinion. Now, if you look at Basquiat's paintings and you were try to buy one, you're probably never going to be able to touch it because it sells for such a disgusting amount of money. And college work and my work doesn't sell for nearly a fraction of that. So what is it? Is it the talent of the artist that's responsible for the difference in price? I personally don't think so. I think it's the hype. And I think that's the problem with the art world as a whole. It's been commodified, hyped, sold, all that. And that's absolutely fine. I mean, let the ultra rich pay absurd prices for their art. But the problem that I have is when this art that's being bought and sold and touted as, as being the best in the world is used as a litmus test for great art. I find that to be damaging. And I wish people, people older than children, whatever that means to you, would create freely. Sure, I'll concede that using the work of established artists can help one develop their own skill and style but let's not forget what it was like to uh, freely create as a child right you see the problem that i run into with helping other people to develop their creative work is that they don't see the merit in their work because their art doesn't look like the art that they're seeing on know, wherever you look at art it doesn't look like the cartoons that they watch. It doesn't look like the animes that they watch or the mangas that they read or anything else. It's unique and it's great, but they don't see the merit because they're look at because they're used to looking at so many other pristine and polished works of art. Now one of the problems with finding our own style is that we're probably never gonna recognize that style because it hasn't been seen before if it's truly unique. 
Now, keep in mind, I said truly unique and not truly original. You can be original without being truly unique. And maybe I'll talk about that next time. All right, until then, take care.